Coming up in today's video, I'll take you through how I paint some of the classic Legio Heroica 15mm Knights Hospitaller. These miniatures can be somewhat tricky to paint as they are wearing rather dark uniforms, but I'll show you some of the techniques I use to get them to really pop. Let me know in the comments section if you enjoyed this break from World War II miniatures and if you'll be using this tutorial in the future. You go to certain death. All death is certain. I shall tell your father what I've seen you become. Okay guys, so hopefully that little snippet from Kingdoms of Heaven will get you in the mood to paint some miniatures for whatever period of the crusade you're aiming for. Now these miniatures are from Legio Heroica, correct me if I've pronounced that wrong and to any of my Italian uh, viewers, but unfortunately they are temporarily closed and they have been for a year. So if you find these models on eBay, I would highly recommend grabbing yourself a set. Now I've also been watching a series uh, of the First Crusade uh, over at Kings and Generals. I would highly recommend checking that channel out. Now this isn't sponsored, it's just this is what I've been watching and um, if you haven't heard of them, which I'm probably sure you have if you're into history, uh, then yeah, definitely worth a check out. Okay, so to start off with, we are going to be priming the model in black. Um, any black, I use the Citadel primer for this one, um, it really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to be starting with base lead belcher from Citadel. So this is just going to be my initial base coat of silver. So you can be quite generous here um, and you just want to make sure you're capturing any of the metallic parts of his sword, helmet, chainmail. Um, this chap has chainmail around his legs as well. So I'm getting that if he's got a belt buckle, any of that stuff. All right, so now we can move on to the next bit. So any of the levery sort of bits of equipment that he has. So I'm assuming this is sort of sort of money pouch or pouch. I don't, I don't really know what these guys would have been carrying. I'm really not clued up with um, this type of era, but I'd be using German camo medium brown to give the initial base coat of this this lever. So. Um, the holster for his sword, again, I'm not sure if that's the correct term. Um, this is a completely foreign period of history for me. I just watched the series over at Kings at Generals and just got hooked. So ended up buying these just on a whim. Um, I got them off a chap um, on one of the swap shops and he provided me with this Crusader army and a, a Muslim army as well. So for Saladin, so it's going to be pretty awesome. All right, so now for the boots, I'm using flat earth. So this is also good for hair. If you want to give one of your models brown hair, if you can see the hair. So the guy playing that sort of instrument, um, he's got hair, but I think I painted that blonde for this one. Um, so yeah, paint the shoes in that. I also like to paint um, the bit of the sword that they hold onto. Um, so I've painted that in flat earth as well. Um, you can also paint the equipment in Flat Earth, if you wanted to keep it really simple but also looking quite good, you can paint them in Flat Earth too, but you want to try and break up the colours just so it all doesn't look like the same sort of thing. Now for the actual like uniform that he's wearing, uh, I'm using German Grey, so we've used that black primer to cheat a little. Um, and you don't have to go this way, black's quite um, a, a, like it's an obvious color. So if you wanted to go just a, a touch lighter, you could go like a dark brown, for example, but the black and then the German gray work really nicely together. So the German gray, I'm being quite generous, but I'm making sure I'm leaving bits of his uniform uh, where it's creased showing that black and obviously picking out the edges with German gray. If you make a few little mess ups here, that's really not neither here nor there. Uh, we're going to put a black wash on later just to really tidy it up anyway. Okay, now for the gold, I went with khaki as my base coat. You could just go straight to gold on this, but the gold that I have, which is from Vallejo, is quite thinned down already, so it takes multiple coats. 
I'm cheating here, so I'm using khaki just as like a, a beigey sort of colour that will complement the gold really nicely. So you can skip this step if you just want to paint the gold part of his sword. Um, you can also paint this part silver, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's really up to you. And then I painted the, the bridge for his nose on his helmet in this too. Probably completely historically inaccurate, but I wanted to try some a bit different. And then once we're done with that, I'm going to unbar wash those bits of leather um, and the flat wood, uh, sorry, flat earth, so his shoes and if he had hair and the uh, beigey colours that we've put down, but not doing the blacker colours. So for those dark black greys, uh, silvers, I'm using null oil from Citadel. Again, a Vallejo black wash will do the job perfectly fine. Um, it's really up to you what you want to use. They're all pretty, pretty similar. People have their favorites. I know some people swear by Citadel washes, others don't, it's up to you. And then once that's dry, you've got a pretty average, but it's good enough to go on the table. You have to paint skin and then boom, you've got yourself a model if you wanted to do them really quickly. It's very dark, but the next step is really simple and we can get them looking much better. So if we wanted to take these to the next step, we all we have to do is go over the colors that we've just done and then add in a, a couple of highlights. So I'm using this as the first highlight stage. So I'm using German gray, I'm going back over the uniform, but this time I'm not being as generous as I was. I'm just picking out those really straight lines and just adding um, a touch of paint down there, as you can see uh, in the video. So use a fine brush for this one. Unfortunately, I only really had a fine brush to work with because my other brushes had uh, died on me. I've got replacements now for the next video, but you might be wondering why I've used the same sort of brush for the whole model. That's why. And again, exactly the same process as what I just spoke about. We're going over that uh, leather color with German camo medium brown, but you're not smothering it on. So it's, uh, this whole process is about putting a little bit on your paintbrush and just working it in, doing little bits at a time, little lines, and you building up to, oh, sorry, and you're building up to what you want it to look like. Don't go super heavy because you'll make a mistake and you'll be like, oh God, I've got to go around and fix that up. Now to finish off the leather, orange brown is a fantastic color for sort of a worn leather look. Um, but just make sure you're not smothering it on. You're just doing little dabs of it here and there, or dabs of it, I should say. Um, and yeah, 15 mil is a small scale. So you're not gonna get the accuracy and the super crisp detail that you would in like a 148 scale or 132 or whatever you're painting. So you can use your imagination here and just add some of the details in that are perhaps missing with this last highlight of his leather equipment. So like straps, etc. Also, if it starts getting too much, don't be afraid to take a break. You know, these models can wait. So just take a moment, collect your thoughts and boom, go straight back to it. So moving back onto his shoes, we go to flat earth uh, and just paint over it. The reason I put that take a break in is because I got to the point where I was painting these where even though it was a very quick process, it got to the point where it's like, oh, okay, now I'm over it. I want to paint something else. I took a break, watched a few, documentaries and boom I had the motivation to go back and finish these off. They're awesome models so it wasn't the models it was just uh, I'd painted quite a few of these so I wanted to take a short break. And then as I said before we're gonna paint gold so I'm using gold now. As I said my gold is very thin, uh, very thin down so I needed that lighter color as the base color and then I can highlight with gold. Some golds obviously aren't as thin down so you can just put them straight on but it's normally metallic colors are are quite thin down and you can see I'm trying to leave little grooves of that darker base color um, on the sword just to give the eye um, just so that I can see those little grooves in the sword now I'm doing like a, a dry brush but I'm using a very small brush for this and I'm only picking out obviously the bits of metal that need to be dry brushed. I don't want to go over the German gray of his uniform or the leather because we've just put in all the hard work to highlight it. So 
just take your time use a finer brush for this and you don't have to get into the very deep corners of um, his bits of metal you can just hit like three quarters of it with this color and it's a dry brush anyway so you're trying to give them the worn armored look because these guys are obviously in the desert for one so they're going to be fighting a lot and it's going to be very worn and then the tip for the sword is just to run it along the outer edges and then across the middle of it that's all you have to do and you'll capture the detail nicely Okay, so with that done, you want to paint the flesh. So the way I've been doing it lately is I use base flesh from AK Interactive. Um, again, Vallejo, Mig, all of them, they offer all different types of flesh tone colors, which are all going to work for you. Um, so you don't have to use AK, but the steps in this process, uh, you know, they're going to be common across all those paint types. Then I use sepia wash from Vallejo. It's more of a ready sort of brown. Um, so it's very good for skin tones. I know they do like a skin tone sort of wash as well, but I find this works really nicely. And again, it's just the same process. It's always the same process. So we're going back over the colors that we've put in. So I'm using base flesh here for that. Obviously depends how um, light you want the skin color to be. It will depend on how many highlights you put in here. So being Europeans, I want them to be obviously a Caucasian skin tone, so I'm using light flesh here, um, straight away light fresh flesh, I'm not mixing base and light, I'm just putting light fresh flesh straight on, because it's only really the bits of his head um, that aren't hidden by the helmet and his hands, so there's really not much skin to actually paint. And then for the final highlight, I'm using light flesh, and I'm just dabbing bits of it on, you know, a bit on the cheek, a bit on the chin, and pick out the fingers a bit on the top of the hand and bosh you're done okay so this is a bit overkill but you, you can do this if you want to only takes an extra 20 minutes so to highlight the boots I'm using German camo pale brown I'll also be highlighting his I'm going to call it the sword holster because I actually have no idea what the actual correct term for that is. I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know. But I'm going to highlight the, the holster uh, with this color as well. And you can see I'm just running it along, but I'm not coating the brush in. So it's almost like a dry brush, but it's not. So there's a little bit of paint on there and I'm just working it in there. Now this is a, a critical step for me, it might not be for you, um, but Stormhost Silver from Citadel is a very bright silver and you just want to pick out the bits that would be facing the sun. So I'm going to paint the very top of his helmet, just a bit around his feet, the bits of armor on his arm but not underneath the armor, just on the tops of it. Um, and I'm just putting little bits here and there just so it's giving that sort of shadowy effect. And then exact same technique, running it along the outer edges of the sword and the middle of the sword. And then if you need to get in underneath his neck fold where his armor is, you can just get a finer brush. And it should look something like this. That's all you have to do. That's as simple as it is. But we need to give him his shield next. So for his shield, I went to Little Big Men's studio and I got myself some of the 15 mil, 15 mil transfers. They're more like stickers, really. Um, they have the Legio Heroica stickers um, and they have the different types of uh, Crusaders of so the Knights Hospitaller and the Knights Templar um, and just your generic Knights. And then it comes with the instructions. So it tells you to paint the front of the shield white, um, cut the transfer out, Peel the clear film off the top of it, apply the transfer to the shield, and then um, bit, put a bit of water on and the film will come off. So we're going to do that. So I'm peeling off that clear film after I've cut around the shield. I'm going to apply it to my white shield and I'm going to just squeeze it on. Once that's squeezed on, I'm going to dab on a couple of drops of water from my fingertip and I'm going to let that soak for about 20 seconds. Once that's soaked, 
I'm then going to peel it off and it comes off super easily and I'm just going to run along the outer edges with my fingers just to make sure that clear film is going around the edges. Give it about 10-15 minutes to dry and then I'm going over it with a black paint because the shield I want to be black. Once I've done that I'm going on the back of the shield where the wooden part of it would be and I'm using flat earth. So flat earth uh, is really good for their spears as well. Once that flat earth is dried I'm using umbar wash and I'm being very very generous here with the wash. Once that wash is dried I'm dry brushing it with flat earth again and I'm being very generous again. And then finally I'm dry brushing the back of it in old wood. So I'm using a bit of blue tack and a broken up toothpick to hold this. You can glue these on and just do it straight on the model but I find that a bit tricky. And then finally I've just got to glue it on so I dab a tiny bit of super glue on the shield or on his arm and I attach it. Although a couple of them did fall off so perhaps find your own technique. And then finally the outer edges of the shield I'm painting in German grey. Now it's a dry brush it's not a paint. Um, I'm dry brushing it in German grey just to blend it a bit better and there you go so that is him with his shield once you, um, you've got to give that shield 24 hours to dry hit it with a gloss varnish and a flat coat and that shine will go which I haven't done just yet but that will be in the next shot So there we go, we've got some Knights Hospitaller to take on Saladin's army. So I'm hoping that these uh, have been painted up for the Third Crusade. Obviously uniforms weren't a specific, you know, you weren't given a uniform like this is what you must wear. They sort of wore, tried to, tried to wear the same sort of thing, but it never was um, obviously exact. And there was no official uniform as such, but I know the only hospitalized uh, we're wearing black garments with crosses etc so hopefully i've painted them somewhat historically accurate as i said many times in this video i am no expert when it comes to many things um, but especially not medieval or ancient miniatures uh, or history for that matter but let me know what you thought of it did you like um this tutorial what did you think of the the decals for the shield would you rather just paint them on as you can see in this video i've I've also just painted a few crosses on just to show that I wasn't super lazy um, and it's a very easy way of painting the shields but I really like how the stickers make the miniatures look. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this video please like it if you're new here, please subscribe it really helps the channel grow. I've grown significantly um, so far in 2023 so I really want to keep that momentum going. So if you could share it and, and tell your friends about this video if you liked it that would be awesome. But other than that. Uh, I will leave it here and I will catch you guys at the next one. Thanks.